Dear sisters and brothers in Christ, welcome to week two of On the Road to Emmaus with me, Bishop Earl Boyer. It is good to be here with you. Last week, I set us the challenge of reading St. Luke's account of the journey on the road to Emmaus as found in chapter 24 of his gospel. Why is this story so important? Because it foreshadows the journey we are now embarked upon over this coming year. As with those two downcast disciples nearly 2,000 years ago, our teacher is also the risen Jesus. Each week, he will reveal himself more fully to us through the opening of the scriptures and the breaking of the bread. Our aim is that we get to know him better in the Holy Eucharist and also love him more through the Holy Eucharist. Why? Because it is in relationship with Christ that we find our deepest meaning, happiness, and peace. And there is no more profound way to encounter Jesus than in the Holy Eucharist, which is the source and summit of the Christian life. So my challenge for our second week is this. Go into a church over the next seven days. Sit down in front of our Lord, present in the tabernacle. Take out a copy of the Gospels. Read the story of the road to Emmaus again. This time, however, I want you to say the words of the disciples in your own voice. Make them your own. Stay with me, Lord, for it is nearly evening and the day is almost over. Did not my heart burn within me as you spoke to me on the way and opened the scriptures to me? Then finally, you were made known to me in the breaking of the bread. Do you want some help regarding what to do and how to do it? Watch this short film featuring one of our fellow disciples who is also on the road to Emmaus. The scriptures are alive. You know, the Holy Spirit has inspired them and that same Holy Spirit is here today as we read them. And so he uses those words and, and the stories in them to um, move us and shape us, make us holy, um, to teach us, to guide us. I like to think of it as just you know, reading the scriptures to find out what God is doing, what God has done, and, and what he wants to tell me now. The bishop asked us to read the road to Emmaus um, from the Gospel of Luke, which was the um, a large section in the middle of chapter 24. It's the second week that he's asked us to, to read it. Um, so he's, he's really been calling us to meditate on this scene um, from uh, the time when Jesus is resurrected. That very day, two of them were going to a village named Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing together, Jesus himself drew near and went with them. But their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, what is this conversation which you are holding with each other as you walk? And they stood still, looking sad. Then one of them named Cleopas answered him, Are you the only visitor to Jerusalem who does not know the things that have happened there in these days? And he said to them, What things? And they said to him, Concerning Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word before God and all the people and how our chief priests and rulers delivered him up to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since this happened. Moreover, some women of our company amazed us. They were at the tomb early in the morning and did not find his body. And they came back saying that they had even seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but him they did not see. And he said to them, O foolish men and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer these things and enter into his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. So they drew near to the village to which they were going. He appeared to be going further, but they constrained him, saying, Stay with us, for it is toward evening, and the day is now far spent. So he went in to stay with them. And when he was at table with them, 
he took the bread and blessed and broke it and gave it to them. And their eyes were opened and they recognized him. He vanished out of their sight. They said to each other, did not our hearts burn within us while he talked to us on the road, while he opened to us the scriptures? And they rose that same hour and returned to Jerusalem. And they found the 11 gathered together and those who were with them, who said, the Lord has risen indeed and has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road and how he was known to them in the breaking of the bread. Yeah, this story is, uh, is amazing. And the heart of it is obviously them recognizing him in the Eucharist, but yet even before that, um, him interpreting to them in all the scriptures, the things concerning himself, and then their reflection back on that, you know, a little bit later, how their hearts burned within them. Reading scripture in scenes like this, you know, and really looking at what the disciples are experiencing and what is Jesus saying and how is he interacting with them has really helped me um, learn how to open myself up to him and, and allow him to be present to me. Because he's, he's, you know, this, the, the catechism in the prayer section says that Jesus thirsts for us. And it says that even our thirst for him is a response to his thirst for us. It's really beautiful, you know, little analogy. And so Jesus is always desiring to be with us. And um, he's right here in the scriptures to present himself to us. Um, but I find that m for most of my life, it was me keeping my back to turn to him um, that prevented me from experiencing him. And so as I learned to turn to him, learned the, to use the, 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 the powerful gift of the scriptures to um, let him be present to me, I, my prayer life has grown and I've learned and experienced, you know, learn more about him and experience his presence more so um, through that practice.